All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to Game Week podcast. Um, sorry, Game Week three podcast episode number four. Today's topic is going to be to see whether Lukaku or any of the other big hitters we'll talk about are going to break the template or not. Um, so let me introduce you to my podcast guest. Uh, I've got Rushant, my co-host, and we've got Roy back as well. Welcome, guys. Welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, well, still. Uh feeling it from the Arsenal loss so apart from that it was all good yep yep all right nice um so today okay obviously okay you guys can see this sweet um today's agenda is going to be so we'll look at teams how we performed in game week two um then we'll talk about the main man against uh Arsenal recently uh and then we'll move on to the teams to target the players to target Something that I didn't add into this would be um, Simica's replacements as well, uh, which I forgot to add, but I'll add it later. Um, then Game Week 3 season ticker, the fixtures, price changes, mini leagues, and the combined managers panel team. All right, so let's kick on. Uh, I'll start first. 77 points, I think not too bad uh, from... Um, Game week one, from after game week one to game week two, I didn't make any subs. I rolled my free transfer. Um, Captain Fernandez, and after game after the Salah game, I was like, "Yes, I've made the correct decision." Only to realize that Salah was better than Fernandez <laughs> in terms of captaincy options. But um, I've got two free transfers. Oh, I had two free transfers. I've already made one. Um, Trent Simicas, the double up Liverpool double up. Continue to pay dividends, uh, although we'll discuss later on how long those dividends are going to be lasting. Um, Shaw, like everyone says on Twitter, which I saw recently, and I'm still in this line, um, you don't get Shaw for his clean sheets or his attacking threat. You get him for his bonus points. And that's exactly what happened here with four points for Shaw. Um, Embuemo, I didn't expect much. Salah, Fernandez, we spoke about. Greenwood, um, 10 points, pretty good. Harvey Barnes, yeah, Harvey Barnes, okay. Uh, Danny Ings with a spectacular bicycle kick, but just like game week one, he didn't do much. Um, And then Antonio, being Antonio, is just on a crazy run of form. I think we'll speak about West Ham as well later. And 16 points, maybe he should have been the captain choice, but yeah. That's my team. Uh, Sitting at a rank of, I think, believe about 300k right now. Sorry, 200k. Yeah, so not too bad. bad. That's good. Um, let's move to Rushant. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Before I go, this is on the podcast as well on Spotify. So for the sake of Spotify, I was sorry for the sake of the podcast. I've already mentioned my team. Um, and I had Sufal and Aileen on the bench as well. Sufal who returned an assist. Now Rushant, go ahead. Um, yeah. So a team for me in the back. I actually did. Um, so after game week one, so uh, um, I actually didn't go with Simi in game week one. And I kind of regret it in the last minute. Um, I think we spoke about in our last podcast as well why I didn't have semi cars was the fact that I sort of wanted to go with a back three I wanted to keep throughout the entire season. But I decided against that very quickly when semi cars became the starting um, left back and he was killing it. So I rushed to bring in semi cars this week and he took a yeah, minus four. A minus four. And along with that, I also had to do a transfer out. Um, just to bring in a more solid midfielder for me. And I guess because I had the money as well. Um, I brought in Pogba, which um, obviously from his red hot form from week one, thought, you know, would be good. Um, overall, I've got 71 points. Not too upset with it. There's a few, obviously, uh, captain to choice again with Salah. I was very disappointed he didn't give me more than three points, especially after mm-hmm. flying week one. Uh, I had the same fear of, oh shit, maybe I should go with Fernandez because he might now provide better opportunities. But Regardless, I think overall, not too upset with my points, 71 points um, with a minus four. Um, Tony didn't do much again. Saw the game. It was a pretty boring game, to be honest. Crystal Palace, Brantford. Um, Gundogan was, I was really upset because he, he actually started the game, captained the game. And I watched the whole game and he had so many opportunities where he came this close to getting some points, either in the form of a cross or either in the form of a goal. Uh, even... even yeah. um, was it Laporte's goal? He had the touch before the assist as well, which was kind of upsetting to me. So, yeah, I mean, 
watching the even Pogba as well, like you know, watch the game. Pogba was very, very attacking the whole game. That's the reason why, you know, with the new formation, they went with Fred and um, Fred and Matic. Matic, um, yeah. So that was kind of positive signs for me with Pogba. Um, he had a few opportunities. He just didn't finish. Um, there was even a lot of short Pogba combinations, which we saw, which would have you know given a bit of thrill for all the managers. Um, yeah, I mean, apart from that, got an assist, which is okay. And obviously Antonio and DCL, who's been my differential player so far. We'll just see how much he can do. For now, a differential. Very soon to become a template. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you had Aileen, Amati on the bench, and Brownhill. Amati did play, but uh, Leicester just mm. considered a lot. Um, yeah. All right. So, not too bad. Any comments from Roy? Oh, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, my, his team or my thing? His team uh, is pretty good. A 71 yeah. is a decent result. All right. Moving on to Roy. All right. Roy didn't have the best of weeks. No, it's say. pretty poor. So I had uh, Target as my starting 11. Hmm. And uh, obviously didn't play. So I got TNE as a sub. Scored one point. Got injured as well. Uh, is he injured uh, for a long time? I don't or? think so, I think. But he won't play next week, I don't think. Okay. Um, because he's a really good option long term. I mean, this is where Arsenal's attack is at. He's always on the left. Yeah. TNE crossing mm. so i'm going to keep him for now um amati i mean leicester we're going to talk about this game again i mean against west ham the red card i think five is that five one or four one the result it's uh four four yeah, one four one I, I mean it's no real reflection of how leicester versus west ham mm-hmm. um luckily i didn't play uh, schmeichel as my goalkeeper otherwise that would be a disaster um, mm. So he scored zero point. Um, so I made a transfer before game week two to get Sunny replace Gondovan. Yes, because I thought Gondovan was yep. injured; he might not play. So I got Sunny. I thought that's a good idea. Um, it, it is it's a good, idea. good idea, I would say. Yeah, it's still <laughs> on a good paper idea. was a great idea. Um, yeah, he didn't score. Had so many shots. He did not score, and he got sub in the end by Harry Kane, which is quite interesting. Why he subbed instead of someone else like Lucas Mora? It, mm. it's, it's quite interesting how that sub was made. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what exactly. You, so the, something else we have to keep in mind is Spurs are in that Europa Conference thing, um, so they do have games as well. Uh, happening, so I don't know. They lost the first yeah, game one as well. Nil. Ha ha ha! Oh, I'm really happy yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think the same with everyone else. If they pick the big two, Salah and Fernandez, mm-hmm. score they didn't mm. score many points. And Dallas, he did so well last season. I thought it was a good pick too, but he didn't do that well in this game. Then I mean, my strikers that they did pretty well. They score, both scored two goals in the first two games. So I'm. I'm pretty happy about my strikers uh, options mm. i mean antonio scored two yeah, I think, mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. just because the red car from leicester yeah um i don't think the team is too bad because look at the names it's okay it's just that um the bench is now going to become mm-hmm. a huge problem once simicars we don't know what's going to happen with simicars yep. um amati is just a vesta card away from uh, getting dropped yeah. as well. Um, and then you've got Target, who's been replaced by Ashley Young, out of all people. Yep. Uh, so uh, that's I'm the actually only... quite shocked. I think Target will get back to the team because he played mm-hmm. the whole season last season. Yeah. And, uh, and I think Sa ended his career. Yeah. In the first game. <laughs> Maybe. And Smith Rowe will play, obviously. And um, yeah. Uh, I need. I do need to think about that. I need to get a, a new defender mm. in for sure. Mm. That is something we'll be looking in this podcast at the end about defenders, because a lot of people, not only you, a lot of people are going to have that issue where some people have White Ben White as well, who's just mm-hmm. got COVID. They have Veltman as well. So there are a lot of defenders who are right now unsure, and we'll probably have a look yeah, into I that think as what well. What happened to um, Arsenal will happen to another mm-hmm. team in the season. Yeah. yeah. So we need. We need a strong. It's 
I guess this brings the point of trying to have like a bench that is decent and right. plain as well. And something to keep in mind because while everyone may be back to full stadiums and all, it doesn't stop the people from getting COVID. So I guess that's something mm-hmm. to keep in mind. Um, with regards to Smith Rowe, right? Yeah. I have a question. Um, Arsenal have signed mm-hmm. Martin Odegaard. Um, will that impact Emil Smith Rowe's ability to play number 10 or no, I would say no because he might get shipped to the left I think that's what they might Bad do regard. because last season they played together and so mm-hmm. basically all the guy would be in the middle uh, Smith around the left and Saka on the right mm-hmm. um, oh, okay so Smith yeah, I think the only the play got okay. effect is Pepe Oh, uh, okay. So mm-hmm. that as well. Okay, so what about the likes of Lacazette and Aubameyang? Like, where do they fit in in this tack now? Uh, I mean, uh, how many days to go until 31st of August? They've got five, six days to go. Hmm. Anything can happen. Is it talking about Aubameyang going? So... They've already got rid of William, right? William's already gone. We're going to Corinthians. That would be a great That would be a great news. I don't think it's confirmed. <laughs> but, but it's... it's that would make my day. <laughs> is uh and the next thing is so they signed Ramsdale as well right he's a 4.5 million goalkeeper imagine he starts over Lena I think that will be also a very interesting option yeah I, true so I wouldn't pick any Arsenal goalkeeper for, no, for I probably wouldn't pick Arsenal defenders I at this point I think Roy shared a stat on me with us earlier in the week about Ramsdale that yeah. every team he's joined has yeah. been oh he's got really good yeah <laughs> I mean Arsenal are sitting what 19th right now yeah yeah on course on course with city to come we'll see right you, you need to get to the very bottom to climb up so <laughs> arteta wants to win a trophy just not the premier league but the championship but to be fair we won the fa cup my united didn't win anything for the last four years so just leave it at that <laughs> fair enough <laughs> No, we won the Europa League, but then again let's have the that's another discussion for another time um all right so now Let's move on to the big decision or a lot of FPL managers might be considering. Maybe not for this game week, but for the upcoming game weeks. And it's only a matter of time before I think all of us think of finding a way to get him in as well. Is Romelu Lukaku. Um, and I've got a few stats up there, right? So I have his last game week stat and, his, and the last two game weeks. Now, he obviously played only one game, but I've added his stats as well and compared it with the players in the last two game weeks so right there his expected goal involvement is 1.58 which is fifth amongst all players in the last two game weeks um, expected goals non-penalty 1.44 fourth amongst all players big chances two which is fifth amongst all players shots inside the box seven which is sixth among all players now okay they've faced an arsenal team which is missing a few key players and also defensively is not as strong as mo- at the moment. Uh, but his last game week stat out of all the strikers and like all the attackers, he's got a significant portion of them at first, except for chances created. I added chances created as well because I think that's part of his game, which he's kind of improved on, where he's able to hold off the ball and play it for the oncoming players like Mount or Pulisic, whoever is on that side. Um, but yeah, thoughts on Lukaku. Are you looking to bring him in? What's your decisions with regards to that? I go first on this. Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, I, yeah. It crossed my mind to get him in instead of Sun mm-hmm. on my second week. Yeah. Um, I decided against it because the coming fixtures are not that favorable. Yes, his coming fixtures are so not good. Liverpool, so he has Liverpool Spurs and City. And City. Yeah. yeah. And Aston Villa at home. I mean, yeah. so I wouldn't bring him, bring him yet. Uh, maybe game week seven. I think, yeah, game week seven is when Chelsea's entire set of fixtures yeah. turn. The one argument that people could have against that is by the time it comes to game week seven, he could be 12 million. <laughs> True. And he's already, what, 11.6? He's got a, he got a price raise? Oh, did he? So, yeah, I think wow. he did. Most um, or he's already got one. Uh, he's I think 11. we'll have a look into that. Moment. Yeah, he's eleven point five. Okay, we'll have a look in the like the price yeah. changes as well. He's due a price yeah, rise as well. He'll rise up very um, soon. Next. Yeah, and while out, so you mentioned um, Liverpool, Aston Villa, Spurs, and um, yeah, City, right? Out of those, I think Aston Villa and Spurs are get goals 
that he I can see him scoring goals in those two games because um, Aston Villa haven't been great and Spurs also even though they kept two clean sheets the stats show that they are due to concede and it's only a matter of time before a team with mm-hmm. a good attack which I think Chelsea has um, put them to the sword so we'll have to see how that goes um, but yeah I th- I think it's a wait and see. I think you need to have patience. Yes. Although, uh, with me, I'll be waiting for that Liverpool game. If he does something in that Liverpool game, I'm thinking of, okay, I need to look at a way to mm-hmm. get this guy in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think for me, like I'm, I'm interested, obviously. Uh, the thing that, that turned me off straight away was the price point, 11.5. And, yeah. you know, the, the effect he's going to have on my team around that marquee players I'm going to have. Um, but yeah, I guess when it comes to a point where if he's going to be highly owned and he is consistently getting goals, I have to find a way to get him in, even if that means sacrificing the likes of Salah or Fernandez um, or Son, you know, one of the marquee players. So yeah, I mean, he's definitely wants to watch. And as we said, Chelsea's got a very, very strong team. Um, I think he's their missing piece in the sense of attack. Like last season, we saw mm-hmm. Chelsea really, really strong defensively and they had chances, but the likes of Timo Werner just couldn't finish. Um, now they've obviously got a more elite striker who's probably at his peak form after his record season in Serie A last season. So, yeah, one to watch, I guess. Yeah. Um, and something to keep in mind is that... Um, so all these stats are being taken from Fantasy Football Scout members area. Uh, so use the link in the description to uh, sign up. Um, with regards to... Again, it comes to that... Um, to, the only way to kind of get rid get rid of him, I mean, to get him in, would be the fact that we'll have to make a sacrifice in terms of one of those big mm-hmm. hitters. Um, and I think all of us have the big hitters in terms of the Brunos, the Salas, um, and even the tra- even Trent. Maybe, maybe that might be another like someone we have to get rid of to try and fit him in if we don't want to get rid of like Bruno or Salah. Um, there's also the talk of maybe wild card in like game week four or something. Um, to fit him in compared to wild card mm-hmm. in game week seven, I guess that's a different story depending on how your team is looking like. Um, I mean, people are still waiting for Harry Kane, right? Harry Kane going to yeah, Man City. Whether he moves to City. If that happens, yeah. I mean, people's got a big decision to make: is Harry Kane mm-hmm. or Lukaku? Mm. Yeah, and I think the thing with like obviously we saw last week how vulnerable Fernandez and Salah are. Um, and yes, in, in the long run, they will be giving you, you know, average points, but there could be weeks where he's going to blank, like, you know, and yeah, more like that's who's going to have the least amount of blanks every week. And mm. if, if Lukaku is proving to be that person, then you'll have to look for a cheaper option midfield to get someone like Lukaku in. Mm-hmm. Right now, um, I think, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I think we wait and see kind of thing. Um, in terms of Lukaku because especially okay, like Liverpool while Liverpool have been defensively solid they, they've had that one issue where I think Alisson has saved them in both games and saved us as FPL managers in keeping our clean sheets as well um, so we'll see how he does because there's there always that question of can he do it against the big teams which he had an issue when he was at United um, so that's that thing to consider another thing to consider is I think the game um before they play Spurs and the the game between Aston Villa and Spurs is the Champions League game as well. So we don't know if Lukaku will be rested for that as well. We don't know if he'll be rested for the game mm-hmm. against Villa. Which if we look at look at it on paper, that might be a game that he could be captain captaincy material as well. Sure. Um so there's something like that as well. We we would expect he'll play every game, but it's hard to say what Tuchel has in mind. Yeah. That's very true. I think this is the first time they're gonna you know, he's got two elite, elite strikers in Werner and Lukaku and you know, he has the option mm-hmm. to rotate. Um, mm-hmm. And with as we talked about, the fact that Chelsea's got such a deep squad, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't rotate around within Champions League and Premier League. So Lukaku might be that mm-hmm. player for Premier League and for those important Champions League games, but you might have the yeah. likes of the reserve, reserve players yeah. um, to play Champions League. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, I guess it, Chelsea, yeah. I think it, the, yeah, it um, depends the on the of last season. At one point, you're going to see a lot mm-hmm. of mix of Chelsea players in your team if they continue to score goals and keep clean sheets. Mm-hmm. I think in game week seven, we're going to see a lot of uh, the, our, our, our teams of red are probably going to switch to a teams of blue very soon. 
um, in game week seven because you're looking at the likes of City, you're looking at the likes of Chelsea, who all their fixtures turn, and the likes of United's fixtures get much more harder. So there's going to be that color yep. swap. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll also have to see what fixture Chelsea gets in their first Champions League tie because the draw is not yet out. So we'll see what happens with that. If they get a big team, then it makes the decision even more mm-hmm. harder. True. So yeah, something to keep an eye out. I think none of us are definitely looking to get him for game week three. That's a no, probably not. I think um, it's just that most of us are thinking game week seven. If he does something against Liverpool, we'll reassess next podcast and yep. see what happens. Um, all right, so that's Lukaku. Now let's move on to the teams to target. Remember Roy when he was here, he said, "Don't get Arsenal defenders," and that's exactly true because right now they're on the. So I've sorted this by big chances conceded, and right now Arsenal are on the top of that list, uh, along with Newcastle. And also I've got goal attempts in the box conceded, well, goals conceded. You've got to be top of something. Headed right? goal attempts. You've got to be top of mm-hmm. something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, chances conceded center, left, and right. Um, so all of these stats from Fantasy Football Cup members area. Um, the reason I added the center, left, and right is just to see, it gives you a good idea in terms of teams that are probably weak on their full back sides, and then you can probably target the wingers that they're facing against. Um, so Burnley, for example, right? They seem to be very weak on their wing or like their full backs. And I think who leads are playing Burnley this time, this week, game week three. Rafinha, mm-hmm. maybe. Is it Leeds? It is yeah. Leeds, right? Yeah, so Rafinha playing on the wing for Leeds could be an option. Um, someone to consider as well. Um, Newcastle, pretty bad defensively as well. Um, with six goals conceded. Um, and who else is there? Leicester. Leicester also haven't been defensively strong so far. Um, and they're conceding a lot from the left, which is interesting compared to the right so that's something you can target as well um spurs like i told you guys the stats are there for spurs to be getting a hammer in very soon um and they they are considering on both fullback sides and it's only a matter of time before that Leicester ge- i mean that spurs game that lukaku has which may be a four on the fixture ticker can mm-hmm. become a three you're right they were so um, lucky against uh, against wolves last week yeah if Adam Atroyer can yeah, no. finish and has his <laughs> yeah. shooting boots on. Traore. Yeah. Um, and then there's Brentford at the bottom there. But like, yeah. Uh, in terms of solid defences, City, Chelsea, Crystal Palace, interestingly. Um, Goita, 4.5 million defender, but we'll see how Patrick Vieira's team does. I see that the, the um, Crystal Palace game, like obviously last week they played, what, who did they play last week? Brentford, The yeah. Brentford it was a pretty boring yeah. game, so maybe those stats probably just hasn't taken into account the fact that Brentford didn't really offer much, mm. um, and most mm-hmm, of that stats mm-hmm. are probably from the Chelsea game. <laughs> so, probably, yeah, that's yeah. a good. Brentford were option, pretty yeah. garbage last week. I just ball mm-hmm. just kept playing the ball around midfield like it was some kind of a drill. I think Zaha mm-hmm. had the closest chance to score, and uh, even the midfield mm-hmm. a bit. Yeah. So and then so in the top right, we're looking at. Arsenal, Arsenal play City, so maybe City players could be an option. This, if you have like the likes of Grealish, uh, Mares, I don't know, I don't know about Mares, mm-hmm. but someone who picked my eye in the City game was Gabriel Jesus, who played his role mm-hmm. really well, and I think most of the assists for that all the goals came mm-hmm. from him. Um, and I think he might continue to start yeah. that role. Um, so something to keep an eye on. I think he was pretty but interesting. Knowing to have. Arsenal and knowing Ateta. When mm. he played Man City, mm-hmm. he typically mm-hmm. are very cautious. I I mm. I would not be surprised if we play three four three in that game. Mm. Mm. Go really hard on defending because that's mm. what we typically do against it against yeah. big teams. We start becoming a defensive team and doing the counter attack. So, but you're right. Yeah, we're pretty shit at the moment with all the injuries and COVID. Um, it is it, it, not looking good. Mm. I can't see them score um, three, though. Um, no, probably not. Well, it depends on yeah. Arteta's game. Uh, we're going to go so defensive. Yeah. Hmm. That's it's something to keep an eye on. And then, it's the same thing we always talk about. Man City players, it's the roulette, right? Like, even though like, yeah. I was surprised I saw De Bruyne on the bench, he was injured or whatever. Um, Grealish started. Grealish looks like, he looks like 
to be starting now for the time being with this yeah. start of two games. Um, I still think the only safest pick for me in terms of playing time is probably still Ruben Diaz and Edison. And That's Edison. still going to be the same. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised Marius came off the bench only for the last 20 minutes. And got, got a goal. Oh my goal. gosh, I wish he didn't get that goal. Upsetting. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I feel like, you know, people obviously, a lot of people had Mares in their teams and, you know, they were probably spewing till about the 70th minute. And even though I'm sure, like, you know, the fact that he did start was very, very concerning. So for me as well, I don't want to bring in a city player. Like, you know, right now we talked about Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't start yeah. next week. That's yeah. how volatile yeah. is. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm always scared to bring him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So what what do you guys think about the Harry Kane issue? Do you think he's going to go or no? Well, that's what talk about for some Ronaldo reason. Issue as well, right? There's another Ronaldo. Yeah, there's like the Ronaldo to City. I don't but, think that's that happening. makes more sense. I, the Ronaldo, yeah, probably. It's like 28 million no, as well. Yeah. It's it's like, they, so, I don't think they will pay for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I can't, I just can't see Ronaldo in blue. No. Yeah. Nah, so I. I don't think there's loyalty in football yeah. per se, but at least I would hope that, yeah. not for United's sake, but for the respect he has to Sir Alex mm. Ferguson, that he probably won't yeah. do it. Um, but, but this is what I think. But, for Man City, they want to yeah. get someone for the year, then they buy Haaland yeah. next year. Everyone is waiting I think that's for what that. everyone wants for Haaland. Um, yeah. So Ronaldo would be a good sort of stopgap signings for one or two years mm. yeah rather than signing signing the Harry is, Kane then they were definitely yeah, not going to yeah, go for more Harley. expensive yeah yeah I, mean, still, still, I, 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 I saw things that he's there City are still inclined more towards Harry Kane than Ronaldo um, yeah. obviously the fact that Kane is younger his asset value will rise you know with time was Ronaldo's going to probably go down with age mm. um I still think right now, if you were looking to get someone for the long run and to sell them for a high price, which City is all about money, I think we'll still go with mm. Harry Kane. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's very interesting to see in five days' time, it's going to be another case of Ericsson. If Spurs yeah. are unable to sell Kane, you're going to see another documentary next year in Netflix talking about why, why Kane was up. I mean, there's a documentary for Arsenal happening right yeah, now. It's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> Can't oh, wait. Who Amazon selects so don't do well, bro. <laughs> okay, let's let's uh, do a prediction. Right. Yeah. Rush, what do you think is gonna who Man City is gonna sign by 31st of August? I actually think knowing the way that Spurs have with Daniel Levy and like his signing history, I actually think Kane is gonna remain at Spurs. And I think City aren't gonna sign Ronaldo or Spurs. So they're not gonna sign any strikers? No. I think okay. City is so, close. So, the, so you think they're not going to sign any strikers at all? Ooh. Okay. Ryan, what about you? I think uh, if the Kane's price is affordable, like 150 and doesn't go above 150, I think Kane will move. I don't think City are getting Ronaldo at all. That's just hard saying it, but I don't mm-hmm. think they're going to get him. Um, but I most likely, by the looks of how everything has been played out so far, I think Kane stays at Spurs. All right, okay. Yep. Uh, actually, I, I think Ronaldo is is a possibility, but more likely or not, Man City will sign another striker. If if, if they don't sign... I don't know why United don't <laughs> yeah. go for Ronaldo. Yeah. I don't understand. We want we a, striker. a striker. Just get him for like one or two years. I don't understand that. Man, Man United really need a striker. Yeah, so, I mean... But more than a striker, they need a center, a CDM as well. So that's yeah. another this thing. So we'll see. Right. Uh, I mean, there's talks about Roy, we'll give you Fred, and Roy. Give us any player. We'll just, just pick one. <laughs> give us. We'll give you Fred. You can take Thomas Lacazette. Party. Yeah, we'll take Lacazette. Why not? No, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the team's target. Um, we'll have a discussion with regards to that as well a bit later. Players now. Players who have done really well so far. Antonio, right on top of that. Roy, are you regretting not having Antonio? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I. I I don't fancy West Ham, but okay. As I said before, they were quite lucky against Leicester. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, I I think I missed the boat. Right? Stats I missed are the boat, I suppose. Um, it's it's kind of a sour grape at the moment. Um, well, actually, yes, I I do regret not getting him. 
but I'm happy with what I have. Them don't, don't cause too much damage to your team, right? Every week, that's what you're hoping for. <laughs> no, no, I know it. But it's still, it's still, a, it's still a good price to get though, and they still have good fixtures up yeah. ahead. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, because Antonio is those those kind of players that when he's fit, he's someone you want to have in your team. Compared to because he's most likely going to get goals. Um, for him, for me, at least, like last season, right, Antonio, the only time he probably wasn't in the team was when he was injured. Um, and if he was fit, it means he's in your FPL, FPL team because he's going to get you goals, and he's West Ham's main source for so goals. My as thing well. as well with Antonio is I want to keep him in as long as he's scoring goals and as long as he doesn't get injured. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The moment he gets yeah, injured, that is a different story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Antonio right on double that list, right? Yeah. With, uh, so this is sorted by XGI. Yeah. Um, Calvert Lewin, like now I just now told Rishant's currently differential going to be template soon. Um, right second on that list, and he's someone I am also looking at. As soon as so Ings, every I think a lot of players, lot of lot of FPL managers have Ings at the moment. He's got Brentford, and after Brentford, his Aston Villa's fixtures turn really bad. That's a straight yep. swap, is what I'm looking at. So yeah, I might actually get Antonio. I think that's. A, I just realized Ings is more expensive than Antonio. I was like, hmm, that makes yeah. no sense. And Aston Villa haven't been playing yeah, well. True. Um. So and Ings is not even on this list. Oh, he's there right at the mm. bottom. So yeah, look at his XG, one point zero one. Um. And that non and that's also okay. This is XGI with the penalty. If you take his expected goals non penalty, it's zero point two. Mm. So Ings is clearly he's not mm. doing enough, even though he's got two goals. One was a penalty, and one one was an extraordinary probably mm. goal of the month winner. Um, but yeah, like Aston Villa aren't doing enough, and Ings is also not doing enough at the yeah. moment. Um. So Calvert Lewin is up there. Uh, Lukaku right up there as well. Um, Traore up there. I wouldn't go through. It. I know Traore. He's outperforming. Like his XGI is really high, but his shooting boots are not with him at the moment. Uh, Traore. I mean, so yeah, even though it's crazy, like I watch him, such a big unit, right? <laughs> Maybe he's yeah. too big to play soccer. Anyway, that's why he can't like, finish. Seriously, like. He, he he gets there. He gets he, he he somehow finds a way to get into really really good positions. He does really well for that. So props to him to get mm-hmm. in that position. But yeah, it just is, just probably doesn't know how to finish. Like what the hell? Like <laughs> for a player of his, I think you know he should be scoring a lot more than what you know what's actually happening. Like the amount of points he's scoring FPL wise. If you watch him in real life, he you know he, yeah he'd be getting much more points in real life than he's in, in FPL. So yeah. And um, the thing is, uh, Wolves' fixtures also get really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think in game big four, so that's another thing. And someone not on this list um, is uh, Raul Jimenez. I think um, we don't know what the impact of his injury has done, like in terms of mentality wise. Um, we'll have to wait and see whether he's able to get back to that like form of I'm going to challenge for each header, try and win the headers, mm-hmm. all of that. Um, but he's also another person who's Obviously, a much better striker than uh, Traore. Um, and I think, what, he's 7.4 oh, yeah, now, yeah, I believe? Or something. Four, yes. Yeah, which is a really good price range for a striker from Wolves, who's got penalties in his locker as well. Um, so something to keep an eye out on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, I, I've always been a big fan of him and his. Um, even last season, I had him in the first three game weeks, the first four game weeks, and he scored a goal each. Unfortunately, he got injured and never came back mm. into my team or anyone's team in that regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, I think he's a player I'll be watching. Interesting to see Wolves with their new coach. That's probably the only big change without mm. Nuno. And yeah, um, yeah, I watched him playing with this head protection gear as well. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right. Like, you know, is he still going to be the same player he was last year, or is that mental thing still mm. going to be there? It's going to affect him in, in a contact sport like soccer. Mm, mm, mm. Because, like, if you look at, like, so in terms of, I can think of, like, major injuries, Shaw had that as well for a decent amount of time where once he came back, he wasn't really willing to put himself into those tackles. And it took him some time to get back. Um, So we'll have to see what happens in terms of um, 
He's Rather quite natural. Central. I I I think he, he yeah. has a huge impact on his men, men, mental. Yeah. I I I play soccer myself, and when you are injured, and it, you don't it, want to do this thing, it's、yeah. just subconsciously, you just mm, won't mm. do things that you usually do, and、mm. especially with a head injury, and yeah, he's a striker. With headers and clashes with defenders, he,、uh, just subconsciously, he just won't do what he did two、yeah. years ago.、Um, mm-hmm. But having said that, Wolves been playing really well. I mean,、uh, against、yeah. Spurs, the penalty was a bit unlucky. That wasn't a penalty、um, to start with. They should have won the game.、Um, mm. They should have at least、uh, equal. The game, it, yeah, that that wasn't a penalty. I, I don't know if you guys watched it. It was not a penalty. I saw the highlights. Yeah, that was a dive. Deli Ali, right? Yeah, Deli Ali. <laughs> so Deli. blatant dive. He just tried to touch someone. He fell. Then he just tried to touch someone and just fall down. I mean,、mm. that's what he did. And then, yeah, that's also something to keep、yeah. an eye out on. And、um, on that list as well, Callum Wilson for Newcastle. Um, we've seen Newcastle defensively; they are pretty weak, but attacking wise, they're pretty decent. I would say、uh, Joe Willock is also back at Newcastle,、um, so that could also improve Callum Wilson's、uh, prospects. But then again, like Antonio, Callum Wilson is that injury-prone thing that is the issue with Callum Wilson.、Um, so that's something to consider. Pogba is on that list. Rishan got him in, and you can see Pogba is also pretty high on that list in terms of XGI. Um, and now he has five assists as well,、um, so pretty high on that list. Someone else who, we, someone else who's been getting a lot of FPL interest is Ben Rama. He's a bit low on that list, but I think he's on for a triple FPL rise in this、mm-hmm. week. I think he's gone. I think I've had to check and see. I think so. They were on course for a double rise.、Uh, him and Antonio. Uh, a triple triple rise has been very rare, but we'll see. I think that's something that could happen.、Um, so yeah, thoughts on Ben Rama as well as an option maybe for Harvey Barnes people who like me <laughs> owning Harvey Barnes. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a good option. I mean, he's in because Lingard is not. Didn't I don't、mm. know if it's still going to happen. If Lingard joins West Ham again, then probably not. Um, mm. But if Lingard doesn't join West Ham, then I think it's a great o- option because he will play and he will、mm. create and he will score. His、uh, other West Ham teammate Bowen is also、mm. on that list,、um, who's higher in terms of XGI、uh, and also like chances created is double. Shots on target is almost closed,、um, but he's just not getting the goals、mm. per se at the moment. But he could also be a prob- possibility. But then again, it, like you said, it depends on Lingard, I guess,、yeah. in terms of whether Lingard goes to West Ham、mm-hmm. or not. Five days left. I think it might happen. happen. I mean, I just can't see him getting any chances at United. To be fair. No, that's it. Yeah,、mm-hmm. I mean, Lingard came off the bench the other day, but I think we we talking about Ben Rama here. If if Lingard doesn't go through, even if Lingard does go through, I still think Ben Rama has been. It'll be a good. It's a good time to bring him in right now. I can、mm-hmm. neither confirm nor deny that he might already be in my team since that day. Same. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> we'll find out next week. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see next、anyway. week. But yeah, those are the players to target. <laughs>、yeah. uh, all right. So now、uh, this wasn't in the agenda, but I thought we'll probably add it.、Um, Uh, right now it says Simicas replacements, but it could very well be a lot of different defenders. Like you got Ben White, you out. You got Veltman out. You got Tierney is injured.、Um, so you have a lot of options. So I went and I got this data. So I've sorted it by big chances created,、uh, and I've highlighted a few other stats as well. Trent right on top there with chances created, everything like just what we expect.、Um, but below that, Sufal just below that、uh, with two big chances created. Um, and also a decent amount of XGI.、Um, Reese James, I think Reese James is like the City players, where that Chelsea is he going to always be playing right back? That's not a sh- assured thing.、Uh, so he's also potential like、um, replacement. He didn't play the week one,、uh, did he? Sh- Reese James. He did. 
he did, he did. I think, but at least just that okay. we're not. Sh- yeah. He we're just not sure that whether he'll continuously play mm. there. Um, Shaw, on top of that list, even though they have not got clean sheets, we can see why he got two bonus points, and there's a reason why because of the chance created and all of that. Simikas is on that list, but we're thinking he gets rotated soon because Robertson is now fit and back. So if not next week, it's just a matter of time before he gets. His place to lose, or maybe it's just his his place to lose, and until he performs bad, he's still in the team. Yeah, I mean, it's just a disappointment. Like I watched him play; he played really well, you know. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And um, I saw Robertson warming up on the bench. I'm like, no, please don't replace him. He cast like no way. <laughs> but I mean, Robertson just signed a new extension for his his contract. Um, he is the preferred number one left back for Liverpool. So I mean, I don't see anywhere how Simicast and Robertson can start. Mm-hmm. Poor guy. I mean, he played really well at attacking. He's pretty much a dream left back, you know. And um, mm. four million FPL dream left back. Yeah, he's exactly. so good. Like, isn't? Um, yeah, but I, I think he will still play against Chelsea, though. Is that next game, Chelsea? Probably. Yeah, he might still play yeah. because it, they, they, they're not going to just throw Robertson in straight away and yeah. against Chelsea. Correct. Yeah, and Simic has been doing so well. I mean, I agree with you. I, I it would be mad to replace him. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to see how what Klopp does. Yeah. But he's done what he did for FPL managers. He got the price rise. He got the returns. Uh, I mean, he got the clean sheets and he got an attack in return mm. as well. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. But other players on that list: uh, Richie for Newcastle, nine chances created. He's on corners as well. Alonso at Chelsea. Again, Alonso, just like Reese James, is it's just a we don't know whether he's yeah. going to be playing. Ben Chilwell and just is right sorry, with Reese James, as well, just to think, uh, he actually came yeah. off the bench for game week one. And yeah, that's why I thought he didn't okay, play. That's why I thought yeah. Aspen yeah. started and uh, yeah, played yeah, there you go. off the bench. So that's, that's, that's my bad. Mm. So that's the thing, right? Both of Chelsea's fullbacks, we don't know how many games they'll start. Even though Alonso and Reese James are really good assets as yeah. FPL wise for points, it's just the games are not sure. Um, and like Pep Roulette, you don't want players on that in your team at that price, uh, wondering whether they're going to start. The thing about not. Dries James is, though, I remember last season he actually ended up. You know, I know we had this. Even last season, like Chelsea's defense haven't changed apart from Chalobala. Uh, you know, yeah, they still have Zuma, Christensen, uh, Thiago Silva, and whatnot. But I remember Aspilicueta because he's so versatile in either centre back or right back. And right now, for right back competition in Chelsea, he's pretty much the only other guy along with Reese James for right back. Mm. Obviously, left back is a different story. So, in that theory, I mean, seeing how Reese James was pretty attacking last season and this season as well, with you know this last game, I still think he would probably be the preferred start, and he'd probably get a lot of games in right back. Um, and you might mm. see Aspilicueta being the one who's kind of shifted down to either centre back. Or you mm. know, coming off the bench for Reese James, but yeah, I mean, he's a player I'm I'm watching as well, especially with Chelsea's um, good fixtures coming up. Yeah, yeah. Well, Arsenal made him look yeah, good the last game. True. He would just probably just too yeah. much space for him. Too much space. Yeah. Way too much space. Mm. I don't know how that happened. He's absolutely a shocker. Mm. The, the first goal... He no, the defending, he just, was, yeah. defending was horrible. It was just horrible. Yeah. yeah so um, someone on that list, Arsenal defender, who is right now injured, but Kieran Tierney, six chances created, kind of shows his attacking potential. Mm. Uh, obviously, we'll have to wait till Arsenal. I think Arsenal's fixtures after City do get better. <laughs> uh, oh, but then God. again, you, you expected it them to be... It has to be. <laughs> Brentford... <laughs> Interesting, uh, Ryan. There's one uh, one player here, which I mean, I've been keeping an eye yeah. on is Cresswell. I mean, doesn't seem to uh, be yes. here at all. Is something off with Cresswell? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I know last season Cresswell was probably a more preferred choice to file, even mm-hmm. though you know mm-hmm. he's a million dollars more expensive, mm. and he's on set pieces and corners as well. What's happened here this season? He, did. I don't. To be honest, um, I, mean, uh, I haven't paid too much attention to West Ham's this thing, but. I think he's still taking the set pieces. Um, yeah, I think he, it's just that they haven't scored any. Yeah, they haven't because... scored any. And they actually, I, I did try to... He did not take any free kicks, though. He did not take free kicks the last game. He 
he did take corners, but not free kicks. Mm. I think um, game week one, him and Ben Rama were kind of intertwined. I think Crespo ended up taking one, but he missed it. But yeah. you're right. I think the Arsenal's attack has now shifted more towards that Bowen and Ben Rama and Antonio. Yeah. They don't need to rely on the likes of Suchek and Crespo for the time being. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. So we'll see what happens. Um, it's too much hype on West Ham. Although Crespo is a good fullback. On West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. But in terms of um, Creswell versus Sufal, something to be considered is that when West Ham play that back three, Creswell does slot into that centre-back position, whereas Sufal plays the wing-back position, which makes him a much more attractive option. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's a really good uh, FPL asset. Usually, Creswell is a really good FPL mm-hmm. asset. Um, yeah. So that's the list in terms of defenders. If anyone wants to have a look at like what defenders you could bring on, <sighs> the list is right here. Uh, yeah, anyone that you guys are considering Simica's replacements? I'm not. I'm not. Someone not on this him. list, by I'm the way. I'm not changing him yet. Okay. You know, same. Uh, someone not on this list was uh, Liv Romento, who played for Southampton. Yeah. Uh, he started at right back and then switched to right winger. Yeah. He's a so, young kid. I saw him as well, and he's only four point mm-hmm. one now. I think four. Um, Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I think obviously if the issue um, everyone's going to have is if everyone's obviously Simica's, um, if he doesn't start now and he's going to sit in your bench, right now at 4.2, he's okay. His value, even if it goes down, yeah. it's not going to go below four for the foreseeable future. But for you know, the, the thing yeah. we talk about is we want to have a bench that plays with the points as yeah. well. You want to look into other options like Libramento. Um, yeah. At 4.1, he looked good. Southampton and Southampton is like, I'm just surprised United didn't win that game. But Southampton, they actually no. defended really well. They defended. Very, very well. Mm, they pressed really, they pressed well, really well. well. So, yeah. um, yeah, he's a player I was watching. He's on. He seems like he's got a shot in mm. him as well. He's not like, and and if he's going to play right wing yeah. at times, it's, it's, really it's a really big threat. Yeah, so someone to keep an eye on. Down. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Um. The thing with me is I'm not going to take Simikas out for a hit. So I just had to find that week where I can replace him without having to. Yeah, I think there's no rush to... I guess the point is people don't need to rush to use points to kick him out of the team just yet. Yeah, Save yeah, your yeah. Unless week, you're... Or, you know. Yeah. Unless you're in a, you have like no defenders properly and most of your defense is out, then you probably have to look into players. You're not going to replace him uh, with but for those, Yeah, no. Nah. You're not going to find... It. The straight swap would be Livramento, uh, but everyone else is probably higher. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, that's the defenders. Okay, so let's move on to season ticker. This is season ticker for the upcoming four game weeks. Everton right on top of there. This is why I think of the whole calvert Lewin option as well um, very soon. And as you can see, Aston Villa right below there. We, after Brentford, it just gets red, um, which is why the Ings to calvert Lewin looks like a good option in game week four. Um, Wolves also on top like I mentioned we had a discussion about Traore we had a discussion about Raul Jimenez Wolves also have a really good set of upcoming fixtures Watford M- Sa, we don't know we'll see how he plays uh, United's fixtures are still decent so the likes of Greenwood Bruno Fernandes good options um, Crystal Palace right at the bottom Chelsea still at the bottom which is why I think we're all saying wait with regards to Lukaku don't get him just yet uh, we'll assess probably next week as well. City also still at the bottom. And I guess when it comes to game week seven, those two teams are going to be switching in to more favorable fixtures and we're going to see them a lot in our teams as well. Um, thoughts on this? Anything to say? I mean, no. nope. same thing. I mean, we, we we have these fixtures as well. I mean, the thing with Everton, if you have an Everton player, I, I, I mean, you keep them. Obviously, you have good fixtures, but for bringing it, Brighton is actually... Surprising, you know, it's a blue, but they got their underrated defense. And you know, last week as well, they kept a clean sheet against Watford, be it. But um, United, again, after these four weeks, if if any, there's any time to have United players, this is the time. Um, last mm-hmm. week, I was kind of nervous not having Greenwood watching the game as well. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of panicking, should, should I have gone with Greenwood instead of Pogba? Because there were some moments where he really frightened me. Like, trying to mm-hmm. score a goal. Uh, I would have been really happy as a United fan for him to score, but the FPL manager and me said don't score. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, look, 
it's pretty straightforward. The fixtures there yeah. makes sense. Just yeah. What about Bamford? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was Bamford, quite popular yeah, that's last season. Leeds. Yeah. Decent set of fixtures yeah, after yeah, him. Yeah, before, Bamford is that which we they had eight, so the problem with the strikers is that they too expensive in the sense that you can't afford you need to make that choice of two essentially especially yeah. if you're thinking about Lukaku then you probably have to go with, you know one expensive and maybe a one other cheaper yeah even you if you think about having Bamford and Lukaku at some point it, you're pretty much going to take a big hit in your other section so in saying that Bamford I think is again still a good option um I, I actually think he's more attacking and way is he's way more likely to be involved in goals than Rafinha, even though Rafinha's value is really good at six point five. If last season Bamford was in my team pretty much the whole, so. mm-hmm. yeah, that's just someone I think after game after the Liverpool game, someone to reassess yeah. and see. Although I won't be surprised if he does score against Burnley because Burnley's defense isn't great so far. Mm-hmm. I think I think really <laughs> party. Bless you. Bless you. Uh, all right, so game week three. This is the team. Who are we thinking this? So this week, the captaincy option doesn't seem more realistically like close because last time. So the first two game weeks we had the Salah, Bruno Fernandez choices. Game week three seems a bit different because Salah is playing Chelsea, Bruno Fernandez. We are not really sure what to expect at this point with regards to United. So, who are your captain options? There comes the talk of. Antonio as well playing Crystal Palace. Although Crystal Palace have been decent defensively, but we'll see. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, I mean, Spurs players will be a uh, Son will be my choice. I'm leaning towards get Son the the captaincy for the, the next game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Harry Kane might play. Who do you have as like know. candidates? <laughs> yeah. So without wanting to give away our captaincy <laughs> decisions, who would you name as candidates? I think there's so many actually. If you look at each game, Everton, Brighton, yeah. you can look at any DCL, even though the Brighton yeah. talked about the defense. Leicester Norwich, and Leicester's been having a pretty average team, but this could be the game that they explode. And you know, Leicester, yeah, because Norwich and Leicester Leicester have had those big explosive games randomly. They go on a they have a nil nil, one nil, something they would like five yeah. one or five or something. So yeah. That's a game we would be a bit scared of if you have a lot of um, Leicester players. I know people have been pretty disappointed with Barnes so far, but I would give him one more week if I had Barnes. I don't have him, but I think this is the week I'd give him one more chance. Probably wouldn't yeah. still captain him. West Ham Crystal Palace, Antonio Benrahma. You can take a punt on them and hope their red hot form continues. Yeah, I'm probably going to stay away from Liverpool, obviously, in terms of yeah. captaincy. And I think any of the Leeds players we talked about as well is probably a good job. Yep. Hmm. And then at the end, Wolves United. I don't yeah, know. Danny Ings. Oh, yeah. We haven't spoken. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Aston Villa. <laughs> like, they're playing Brentford. Uh. Like, if they were more attacking, I would have said so, but they don't seem to be attacking. And Brentford's so. the, one of the teams to have kept a clean sheet so far. So, I mean, two, two clean, clean sheets so far. Yeah. So. <laughs> Surprisingly, that's, so that's the thing. Uh, yeah. Maybe we well, all it's against the Crystal luck. Palace and Arsenal, so true, true. <laughs> maybe we think it's yeah. pure luck. Maybe we think you know it's pure luck in the sense that a championship. But maybe who knows? Their defense might be behind right now, and they mm. so. yeah, we'll see. I guess that's something to make and see, like wait and see. So yeah, those are the captaincy options. There are plenty of you we mentioned just now. Um, yeah, so price changes. This is something we want to look at. Um, let me actually get it up. Um, so there you go, right on top. Rich James, um, Rich James, Lukaku, Lukaku. There, I told you, by game week seven he could be twelve million. We don't know. Um, he's due for a price price rise tonight. Calvert Lewin, Rishan Tassim, due for a price rise. Ben Rama due for another price rise. So the double price rise. Um, Sun due for a price rise. Antonio due for a price rise. Um, Amati seems to be there for a price rise, but I don't think that'll happen. We'll see. Uh, Livramento, who we mentioned, um, also looking like it right now. Four million could be four point one. Uh, who else is there? Let's look at like just the price falls, right? I actually think you uh, know people have been I've been reading about this Amati price increasing yeah. as well. Um, it potentially could be the fact that Simicas is not gonna. People are sort of looking for the. Ah, uh, they're just replacing. 
Uh, yeah. And then, you know, obviously we talk about people who are playing, Amati and Liverman yeah. are probably playing right now and Simikas may not play. So that's probably another possibility. But yeah. if it's purely because yeah. of form, I don't think people bring Amati in because if he got zero. <laughs> yeah, so. true. Um, in terms of false Ben White on there, Watkins, Cavani, it's not too big. Weltman on there as well, Lingard as well on there. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, the price rise is something to keep an eye out on. Lukaku as well, Calvert-Lewin. The Calvert-Lewin price rise last time, I was like, oh no, why? <laughs> but yeah, that's the price rise. Any concerns with that? Or, yeah, or interesting. Good? I mean, is... h- how does it work? So the price rise on certain days? I think it looks at like, it, um, so the prices always increase at 2.30 a.m. UK time. Oh. Um, that's when the price switch happens. Um, and this is just calculating the possibility right, right, got it. Uh, of a price rise. Um, and I think their accuracy, is, this is their accuracy at right now. Oh, cool. So it's a pretty good accuracy, I would say, in terms oh, of wow. price rise. Based on transfers in? One yeah, transfers uh, in it and transfers out. Yeah. The main reason. So, and ownership as well. I guess, I guess ownership plays a huge part. If you have a massive ownership, mm-hmm. um, the transfers out it's going to be significant, but compared to the total ownership, isn't that significant? Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot so, of play. So knowing this, so what's the strategy for people trying to choose their players? Do they go with what everyone else go with, or they f- try to find someone? And well, I guess it's like your squad mm-hmm. value, right? So uh, Ben Rama, if you knew he was going to get a price rise before the first mm-hmm. one itself, you could have like done a Harvey Barnes to Ben Rama because Harvey Barnes, I think fell in price as well something interesting to because Harvey Barnes did fall in price I would mm-hmm. say where is it it's not on this list but I think it, he did fall Harvey, Harvey Barnes yeah. so yeah so that's like a if you want to lose value and gain but like you don't want to lose value on Harvey right. Barnes you could get rid of him yeah, and bring in Ben Rama good. yeah yeah so that's the thing um anyways so this is the price changes um with regards to what am I what am I what am I mini leagues um I'll just quickly point to mini leagues as well because we went a bit too high in terms of time. Um, Football Jackbox League, Billy Hunter at 90, Jitain at 78, and I'm at 77 at the moment. Um, So that's the mini league update. And finally, our combined team didn't really do well, I would say. Uh, Doesn't seem like we're doing well in the combined team. (laughs) How did you get the highest points Um, league, by the way? Yeah, this is the highest points team. Um... Let me just see if the highest points team is appearing or Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I need to get the highest points team up. But before I get the highest points team up, let me get the combined sure. team up. The highest I've got too many things open world, right now. You mean? Uh, for that oh, game, yeah, we tried yeah. last week to get the highest, but it didn't work. Um, so this is the combined team that we have. Okay, let's... Do we want to make a transfer? Are we looking at making a transfer? Let me just put the team for the upcoming game week. I think we'll start with Sufal. I can we start Dallas. Get rid of Smith Rowe right from the bench. Yeah, put him in the bench. The Bank City. <laughs> Nothing well, the Bank City. So. Arsenal is going to surprise you, guys. I think we keep Ings for one more week. Yeah. Who do we captain? I don't mind taking a bad punt on Bamford. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, not too bad. Uh, are we making any transfers for this? Probably, Probably not. not. That's pretty decent. Them. Happy with this? Oh. Yeah. Okay. We'll save it and yeah. see. Let's see how, how many points next we get. We won't get rid of Inks. We got uh forty-seven. Oh, pretty average. Mm. Pretty average. Yeah. Below below average. Uh, but yeah. So we'll see how this team goes in terms of the combined team. Mm. Um, the high scoring team, I think, we'll do it in another one in terms okay. of time. Sure. We'll look at it a little bit later. Um. So that's basically the team. Um. Let me close this. And close this. All right. So thank you all for watching. Thank you to Roy and Rishant as well for appearing as well. We'll be back. I don't know if we'll be back next week because it's the international break. We'll see what happens with regards to that. But good luck for game week three. And yeah, thank you all for watching. If you're new, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and peace yeah, out. Go Arsenal. GGM. Okay, one of that is going to make the recording.